Hello, and welcome to Love Where You Live, a production of the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce. We do this show monthly, and I'm so glad you're here this month to see what we have to offer. I have a special guest this morning, Jeff Main, from Above and Beyond Children's Museum, uh, of which I am intimately acquainted. I have taken my grandchildren there several times, and welcome to the program this Thank morning, Jeff. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Very yeah. Very excited. Well, we're excited to have the museum and all that it has to offer in downtown Sheboygan. Yeah, we, we love it, our location, and um, you know, there was times when we thought about moving, but we came to the conclusion that's the place we should be. Yeah, so. it's kind of a fun building, tall, and it, it kind of reminds you like it comes out of a storybook. It does. It's, it's, there's some challenges to an old building, but yeah. the, the advantages to an old building are, are outweigh the, the challenges. So. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk a little about how you've improved that building and yep. even made it more fantastical than it was to begin with as we go yeah. along today. All right. Um, tell, give me a little history about the museum give our, for our viewers. Okay. Well, actually, um, next year we'll be celebrating our 25th anniversary, so we're, we're working on things to, in preparation for that already. Very but, nice. Uh, so we were founded in 1993. Um, okay. And it was a, a small group of people that got together founders and with an idea like everything mm -hmm. starts and and uh, they wanted something for the children of Sheboygan so it started out as like a traveling road show and they built some exhibits and they would go to um, the county fair or to brat days and with these exhibits and mm -hmm. uh, and then it progressed on to that and it was in a shop a storefront down on South 8th Street okay and then in 1998-99 that uh, the current building that we're in would, became available and it was purchased and renovated so I hate to start naming names but Daryl Gum and there's a number of people Brian okay. Hart Gary um, or Gary Hart and um, but there's a, a core group of people that were founders of the museum and one of them Bonnie Schmitz is still still around she volunteers at the museum Great. so um, it, it's come a long way it's it, come a long way. It's come a long way just since I've been here, which has yeah. been about seven years as the chamber director. Right. And I remember visiting and talking with you and you sharing some of the plans at that point in time that have all come true, by the way. Well, we try, yeah. So, so let's talk about 2009, you arrived on the scene. Yes. What, what transpired after you've arrived? What kinds of things are in place now that weren't then? And, right. and assume for the purposes of this conversation right. that Someone hasn't been there, hasn't exactly. seen the inside. Well, so. first of all, there wasn't a big ship coming out of the building. And yeah, now, <laughs> yeah, that you can now, see from the outside. Yeah, um, there's been a lot of changes, and the ship is an iconic thing, and we wanted to do that to be iconic. Mm -hmm. And when people come from all over, um, out of town guests, and they they go back to their hometown in Iowa or Illinois or wherever they're from, and they say they were from Sheboy they were in Sheboygan. Our goal is, did you see that building with the big ship coming out? Uh -huh. So. It was done for that purpose, to be iconic, and, and but it, it's more than that because on the inside, if you come inside, mm -hmm. there's also the ship is on the inside of the building too, right. where the children can then um, do things on the, the schooner. And the reason we did the schooner to begin with is to show uh, kids why Sheboygan's even here, that we're on the Great Lakes and we were formed that Sheboygan's here because it's on the Great Lakes and the Sheboygan River, and and so that that started the whole discussion and. Um, so we do have a goal. Process for refugees works. I think it's all that that's trying to be accomplished by this order. It's great to bring people here that we know who they are, they're hardworking, and they want to be Americans. But according to McLaughlin, the United States vetting process for refugees is already very intense. It lasts between one and a half to, two, to three years. And that checks their backgrounds, where they're from, includes interviews, health screenings, even biometrics, a lot of different agencies. So when they get here, we know who they are, we know where they come from. McLaughlin says the Fox Valley is typically welcoming two refugees. For the most part, people seem to be very receptive. They want to learn. McLaughlin says sometimes the more people learn about the refugee program, the fewer fears they have. Three federal appeals court ju judges in Chicago will decide this summer whether Brendan Dassey should have his conviction reinstated in the slaying of Teresa Halbeck in Manitowoc County. The appeals panel heard arguments Tuesday on the state's request to keep Dassey behind bars. 
The judges asked state lawyers whether persecutors' questioning of Dassey amounted to a promise of leniency for Dassey, who was 16 when he confessed that both he and his uncle, Stephen Avery, raped, shot, and burned Halbeck in 2005 near Michigan. A federal magistrate ruled last summer that Dassey should get a new trial after the TV documentary Making a Murder raised questions about his and Avery's guilt. A state attorney argued that Dassey was promised no benefits in exchange for his cooperation, but his appellate lawyer argued that questioners took advantage of Dassey's age and low IQ at the time. WBAY in Green Bay says the seven Circuit Court of Appeals will not issue a decision on the case until after June. In sports, the UW Sheboygan men's basketball team defeated UW Fox Value 100 to 74 to advance to the second round of the WCC playoffs. Leading the team were TJ Pitch with 25 points and 12 rebounds, Cortu Josiah contributed 20 points and 6 assists. Alex Antoine had 18 points and 10 rebounds, and Julian Jones for 14 points. The Wombats host UW Washington on Saturday at 2 p.m. And that's all for today. Join me again next week for another recap of your local news. Content for this program provided by WHBL in cooperation with WSCS TV. There, so on, on our, we have windows all around the building, but not on the north side of the building. There's mm -hmm. no windows because there was a at one time a building came there. right up next to you so they said I said well how are you gonna do that and they said we'll cut a hole in the wall and, we'll, and I said okay can we put a window in after we cut this hole sure we'll put a window in so now we got a, a window that overlooks the children's garden so it all worked together Wonderful. and it's beautiful and yeah. the fire and truck is fun. awesome yeah yeah and and I don't, don't know if you know this but if you look at the fire fire um, station downtown mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure which street that's on but it's a pretty good replication of that firehouse. We try to do things. I mean, we're not a historical museum, but we try to yeah. to do things that so that kids can recognize them and, yeah, and exactly. know and feel like that's their home or exactly. that's the place they're visiting, and yep. they know more about us right. when they leave. So, yeah. no, I think it's very special. And I, you know, I, I mentioned to you before the show when my grandchildren, three and five years old, went into this museum, we were pretty much hands off. They went around, tried on every costume, played every role, did the fire truck, the school, the medical, yep. the fishing, everything in the museum all on their own. Yeah. So. It, it, that's what makes the place special. Yeah. It's the one place or very few places in the world where children can touch everything. I mean, that's yeah. our motto. And, yeah. you know, it's for them. And it's not just for children. It's children of all ages. Mm -hmm. We're all children in some ways or another. But it's, it's a great place. And, and the other thing is play. It used to be a taboo word. And now yeah. they're doing a lot of research to show how the, the importance of play. Oh yeah. And we've always used it in our in our mission. It's been in our mission for 25 years now, but now that the um, research is indicating the importance of it, we're even promoting that more, obviously. But really, yeah. the mission is is a place for children and their families. So that connection, mm -hmm. that that child, adult, whether it be a, a parent or a grandparent or a caregiver of some sure. sort, yep. where they can interact and be in an environment. We're play in education, so the play is in there, but we want it to be educational as well. Mm -hmm. Connect through exploration and discovery. So it, nice. it's a great mission. I mean, it basically says what we do. It's say all that hands again. on. What's that? Say, it's say um, that again. a special place for children and their families where play and education connect through exploration and discovery. Oh, very nice. So everything's hands on, exploring, discovering, learning, playing. Very it's true. And role playing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Definitely learning about all of those things. So tell me now, so you had this vision in 2009 when we met. Yes. Now, what's the vision now? What are you looking at long term? Well, we have a couple things we're working on. Um, 
we have a lot of exhibits in the museum, and in the past they were very sporadic. There was a, a you know one thing here and then over here. So we're trying to get more themed type of um, atmospheres, and it's going to start right when you walk in the museum. And we're we're doing this passport to the imagination. So we're trying to replicate the fact that when you're entering the museum, you're entering a child's imagination. Mm. And there's some really cool things that we're working on to get to that point. So the first floor, well, the, it's going to start in the lobby. And the lobby is going to be sort of the Northwoods version of the Rainforest Cafe, if you've okay. ever been to a Rainforest I Cafe. Have. But it's going to be northern Wisconsin, or even this part of Wisconsin, with trees and animals and mm -hmm. sound effects. Real dramatic. Real. We've walked into a different environment. Nice. And then when you walk into the museum, the first floor is going to revolve around a child's backyard. So we have the treehouse already, which, I mean, if you think about it, when a child is growing up, their imagination in their backyard, in their treehouse, in their fort, whatever their, you know, their kids are doing. Right. So the whole first floor is going to mimic kind of their backyard, and there's going to be different things. And um, a lot of it's going to be around the um, STEAM, which most people recognize it as STEM science, technology, engineering, and math. We find it real important to have the A in there. For arts. For arts. Mm -hmm. A lot of people forget that. Yeah. And personally, I think that's probably the most important thing. That might be the wrong thing to say, but um, okay. actually, uh, Carolyn Lee from the Kohler Foundation came through, and we were talking, and she said, well, what about the arts? And I'm like, oh, yeah. yeah so i got to give her steam. credit for that. I love steam. that. Mm -hmm. So we're going with STEAM, and we're going to have a lot of our, our exhibits um, Re reflect steam, and but not just what a kid can see as steam, but what they can do as steam, because that's what it's all mm -hmm. about: is their hands-on and how they can create things and do things. Right. So, so that's going to carry over to the second floor. Should I keep going? Sure, <laughs> I think so. Okay. Yeah. So the second floor, we have the Seagull Circus, which has been in the museum for a long time. It's it's a large circus display that was hand carved by Mr. James Siegel. And almost everything still works. Yes, it's been yeah. there for it's been in the museum for a while. But he spent his whole life um, doing this project. Wow! And it is amazing, and it really wasn't interactive at first. I mean, it was something you just look at. So the founders mm -hmm. of the museum, they were a genius in this respect. They came up with the fun cards, where it's oh, a card yeah. where you can put it on the little window and activate something in the circus. Excellent. So that made it that interactive experience. Okay. So we, we're going to embrace that, and we've already have. We added um, the, our latest addition to the second floor is the um, mystical glow room and the human shadow. Kind of a sideshow mm -hmm. of the circus. All right. Yeah. And it's made to look like a sideshow of the circus, where they came up, they flipped the thing up, and it was a sideshow. And what it is is the um, the glow portion of it is a giant light bright. If you remember, you know, the little, the little eight brights. This is eight foot with big pegs. It's, it's awesome. Fun. It's very cool. And, um, and then next to that is the human shadow. It's basically kids can project their shadow on a wall. And then they can take these light writers and they can write with them on the wall. It's a phosphorus. It's, it's wow. cool. So, and then our next project is to add to that circus expansion. So the second floor will be circus, circus okay. theme. And then the third floor, like I said, the Port of Sheboygan. And, right. uh, and the fire truck. Well, that's great. That's so great. We, we've got the interior um, vision, and then we, we have the outside vision as well, where we have community gardens and, mm -hmm. and a children's garden. And we do a lot of outdoor educational programs during the summer out in the gardens. And then a portion of it is for downtown residents, um, mainly elderly that don't, are, don't have the ability to garden anymore. Because okay. So we give them that opportunity. So it's more of a community service Very type nice. of thing. Very nice. What about special program nights? I know you have a few of those, like we do. Tuesday for toddlers. Or? Yeah, almost every day of the week we have a special program. And okay. it's for different reasons. It, some of it's for our members and give them a reason to come back throughout the week, because if we have a membership, you can mm -hmm. come whenever you want. Um, we have, like, so let's see, Toddler Tuesday. So it's oh, set right. for the littler kids. Um, mm -hmm. Wednesday. Wednesday is our eat, play, gr eat, play, grow. That's more okay. of a summer activity out in, the, out in the gardens. It's a nutritional-based program, but basically, there's a there's they can go out into the gardens, pick some strawberries, pick some different things, bring it over, and then make some healthy snack. And then there's an activity with it. it it's perfect. Very nice. Yeah. And then special needs. You do some things for special yeah. needs folks. On the second Monday of the month, we do special needs night, and we okay. do that just because we should. 
You know, yeah. it's like one of those things that there's families that have um, children with special needs and they don't have a lot of places to go and and, yeah. they, and you know they go to a restaurant and something happens and a kid you know has a meltdown or something it's just embarrassing you know it's so we do this on the second Monday of the month we close the nice. museum you know we're open just for that and we modify mm -hmm. the museum to accommodate you know we take away any bright lights or things that might overstimulate kids and mm -hmm. it's a free thing it, and it's for the kids for Excellent. families with special needs very nice so. and they can all do it together too with exactly. their other kids yep. and we serve a snack and stuff so we're trying to accommodate the families and, and make it a good experience so have we talked the next five years we pretty much covered that one five years yeah. oh no 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 yeah. well five years yeah well eventually there's some plans and there's a drawing and hanging in my office we've got lots of drawings around okay. if you come downstairs in my office uh, we have a great uh, artist on staff who's uh, Bob Fleming and he does these renditions so they're not um, they're not um, architect renderings but they're right. artist renditions uh -huh. and one of them is of an expansion and that's right. the ultimate goal we're really running out of space the museum is about 10,000 square feet okay and, yeah um, if we can change things we can move things around we can squeeze things in but really to grow in a big way we would we would need and we have the lot next door so um, there's there's a drawing with a, a building that okay. would be towards the alley towards the the restaurant um, it would be very similar in shape except for the design would be different it would be more futuristic glass solar so it would be mm. the old okay. the old building and then the new um, the new would probably be more uh, more science more um, technology more futuristic type yeah. exhibits and then they would be connected with a bridge over the gardens so wow. it's, it's pretty cool it, it's a big dream and hey you've got to have big dreams <laughs> and then you get other people to see those big dreams right. and I think you know with all the parents here who've enjoyed this museum and the kids who've grown up here and enjoyed watching it progress you'll you'll be able to get support for a dream like that I, I hope so because it'll be fantastic mm -hmm. and it would be it's great to it, now that it's been around 25 years you bring up a good point um, you know we're seeing people that were there when they were kids and now they're bringing their kids absolutely and, and it, it's just really neat um, so Jeff thanks so much for coming and and absolutely. you know you think about winter and things to do for kids because kids get antsy in the winter just right. like parents do and if they can get out and have places to go like this wonderful museum um, we are so much the better for it so we appreciate all your leadership and and the way that you've helped to grow this museum Absolutely. as well as well, your staff you. so thank you very much thanks for joining us today. I appreciate it. Welcome back to Love Where You Live. Brought to you by the Sheboygan County Chamber, I'm Betsy Alice. In the second part of our show today, I'm going to review a few interesting and exciting programs that the Chamber is undertaking in the next few months. Uh, I'm going to start with one that actually happens next September, which is more than a few months, but you'll want a little time to plan. We are introducing a Rhine River trip in our travel program. This will be on the Rhine and Mosul rivers in a beautiful riverboat, fully appointed with wonderful luxuries, three meals a day, and they're fabulous meals. Um, and you will cruise down the Rhine River through four countries. We'll start the trip in Amsterdam and then go through Germany, France, and we'll end up in Lucerne, Switzerland, um, where you can take an optional trip up Mount Pilatus in a uh, Oh, like a ski kind of situation where they take you up the mountain in two different ways because it's so high. Um, the views up there are spectacular. So I'd like to just talk a little about riverboat trips because if you have not been on one, there are some very special attributes I'd like to share. I have been on this particular trip that we're offering. It's called the Romantic Rhine and Mosul River Trip. And indeed, it is a romantic trip. Um, because of the areas it goes through and because of the expanse of this beautiful river. Uh, you go through many locks while you're there. You stay in your room so you never have to pack or unpack during this entire seven-day cruise. 
Um, so there's a seven-day cruise, and then there's a two-day land trip uh, in Switzerland at the end. So we start in Amsterdam. I think the, the second day we're in Cologne, Germany, where we have a city tour of the beautiful cathedral and all of the surrounding areas. Um, it goes on, winds down the river, and a lot of the travel on a riverboat is in the nighttime when you're sleeping, and it's almost completely still. So if you have any issues with seasickness, they will not plague you on this trip. Um, so you wake up every morning in a new beautiful place, which to me, that was the most distinction between regular travel and this kind of travel. Um, another thing that I, I found really fun is the idea that when you're traveling from place to place during the day, um, on one day in particular, in fact, we had 12 castles to go by. So they had commentary along the way, and we sat up on the deck, you know, had refreshments with our newfound friends, and just completely enjoyed the entire day, even though we were moving along. So on a regular tour, as you know, a lot of your time is spent on a bus. In this case, that's not true. Um, you're just spending it relaxing with friends. Um, on this particular river boat that we have um, chartered for this trip in the fall, there's actually a swimming pool on deck that you can take advantage of that it actually will either close or open depending on the weather. Uh, so that's a very special thing that my trip didn't have. Um, so I'm excited for you if you decide to take this journey. Um, the total journey is uh, from September 21st to October 1st. Um, Actually, for our trips, you get picked up right in Sheboygan at the Chamber of Commerce. So you just simply park your car, it's free parking, and go on the trip with no worries. So I, I strongly recommend this trip. We only have a few places left. Um, so if you are interested, you can either call the Chamber at 457-9491 uh, to get more information, or more easily go to our website. Um, where you'll find this uh, at Sheboygan.org. That's our website. Uh, so I invite you to just explore the itinerary, see if it, if it sounds like something you'd be interested in, and then join us. Um, a lot of the travelers who've been in chamber travel in the past are repeat travelers because the experience also includes these friendships that are newly formed and last for a lifetime. Uh, so. You know, it's just a, it's a wonderful way to network, to get to know people in a deeper way um, than when you're just doing business day to day or living down the road from one another. So uh, strongly encourage you to do this. It's an excellent trip. <clears throat> We've had past trips to Ireland, China, Italy, um, and all of them have been just wonderful um, examples of how people from the Sheboygan area um, can make a fun time anywhere in the world that they go. Uh, so, again, you know, I would encourage you to sign up early. Um, we have, I think, maybe nine to ten spots left, uh, and that's not a lot when it comes to a trip like this. So check it out. Uh, second on my list today, um, we have created a new award for the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce um, to bestow upon someone each year. Um, this award Unlike our other awards, which are for manufacturers, retailers, service providers, all those kinds of things, this particular award will be for an individual. It will be honored at a special banquet in May. It's called the Athena Award. It's the International Athena Award. It has been in existence since the late 70s and was created in Michigan and sponsored by General Motors at that time. Um, it was created specifically to encourage and promote women in leadership positions in their communities, in their professions, and so on. So, so we took a while to adopt it, um, late 70s, now we're in 2017, um, but it's a really important step, I think, for us to take. Um, the nominations for this award are now open. And just, you know, to give you a little background, I'm going to actually read the mission statement of the Athena Award so that you can get a, the gist of, of what it's meant um, to accomplish. The Athena Leadership Award actively supports the Athena mission to support, develop, and honor women leaders, inspire women to achieve their full potential, 
and to create balance in leadership worldwide. The particular person that we are looking for, and we will likely have many nominees, uh, shows the following criteria. They demonstrate excellence, creativity, and initiative in their business or profession. They provide valuable service to improve the quality of life for others in their community. And they assist women in reaching their full leadership potential. So there's a self-development piece of this, and there's also a commitment to help others along the way so that they can also achieve their fullest potential. Um, our nominations are open right now, as I said. You can find more on our website at Sheboygan.org, and you'll find the application form there for the nomination. Um, the deadline for the nominations is February 28th, so you know, not much time left on this one. But um, very important award for our community and in years to come. So I encourage you to think about the people that you've known in the workplace who have really spent a lot of time and devotion to seeing that women have the opportunities for career development and leadership development in our companies. So that's the second item. The third item, just I'd like to talk a little bit about our Coastal Young Professionals organization. Um, this was started within the Sheboygan County Chamber about 10 years ago now. Um, it has grown significantly in the last two years um, due to a couple of factors. A young professional is defined as someone between the ages of 21 and 40-ish um, who um, uh, is in a profession, has a, has a commitment to develop themselves within their profession, and would like to meet and interact with a variety of people throughout the community. They concentrate on three areas, and they have events and programs associated with all three of these. Um, the first is social. Um, it's important for our young professionals to develop relationships in the community so that they want to stay here, so that they have people to attend functions with, so that they can help each other in the business community. Um, so that's the first is the social, and they have a lot of events that bring young people together around um, sailing, around cross-country skiing. Those are a few of the things they've done in the past. The second area is career development. And career development is um, an extremely important part of our Young Professionals program. In fact, one of the reasons that our Coastal Young Professionals program started was that employers saw a need for career development in this particular age group as people entered their careers and began to develop for future positions. So they have a number of things going on in this regard. They've had workshops on emotional intelligence, on speaking, and all of those kinds of things. So, um, and then the third piece is community involvement. Um, they have something called Coastal Cares, and they've adopted organizations each year, and they go as a group to collectively help these organizations in whatever way they need. So we have a core of, of community volunteers within Coastal. Um, but last but not least, Sheboygan County has been selected to host the next um, YP Week kickoff event on April 22nd. You'll be able to learn more about this on our website, but it's very important because it's going to bring young professionals from all over the state of Wisconsin to showcase Sheboygan County. They'll be staying at Blue Harbor. They'll have a number of activities and fun things to do, and our employers from around the county are supporting this so that we can show them a really good time because we'd love to have them all move to Sheboygan County, wouldn't we? <laughs> Um, that's really the kind of undertone here, but um, it's going to be an exciting event and it will kick off a whole week of activities for our young professionals in Sheboygan County. So thank you for joining us today. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.